Ahoy, y'all! Rick here. So, Star Trek cities are a science fiction future, and part of that setting is seeing things flying through the air. While not Star Wars is Coruscant levels of traffic, there undoubtedly exists technologies within Star Trek that take the place of such everyday transportations. However, despite their existence, we do not see many air cars, flying taxis or whatever. So why is that? Well, first off, let's take a look at the various methods civilians have at their disposal to travel around the worlds of Star Trek without breaking the atmosphere. I will also be looking into the Kelvin timeline films because they feature such vehicles in closer detail than anywhere else. First up, air cars. Also known as anti-grav cars, flyers, air cars or sky cars. These are privately owned vehicles that contain anti-gravity units and fusion drives, something far less powerful than impulse drives, and they zip around predetermined lanes between buildings in cities. They feature a high degree of automation, but did also have manual controls and reached speeds of around 160 km per hour, although speed limits likely applied in populated areas. You could take sky cars out of the cities and use them pretty much to travel anywhere across the planet, however they were limited to atmospheric flight, and models that were expected to cross mountain ranges required specially designed cabins for the altitude. There were transport industries that managed lines of these air cars akin to buses or coaches, and seated multiple people as well as personal ones and these were a common sight on planets across the galaxy although infrequent on Earth. There also existed gunship varieties that had weapons attached for patrol and defence, but we only saw these in the alternate reality, such as the jump ship. A cousin of the air car is the hover car. A hover car is built in a similar principle, but the anti-grav unit is similar to that of a gravity sled and does not elevate the car above a certain height, usually only several feet. These are therefore a lot slower than the sky cars, but can make use of the extensive road networks that cross the countries of Earth and other worlds. Civilizations, of course, develop ground travel before flying cars, so such roads are remnants of that time but are still useful. At ground level, they likely still abide by a similar highway rule set as current day cars, and we see even law enforcement versions again in the Kelvin films, although that is more of a hover bike than a car. Saying this, there were also still cars that operated in contact with the ground, the Argo buggy being one example that springs to mind although that was a Starfleet creation. Nonetheless, it shows that wheeled vehicles were still in use too for situations where anti-grav was not feasible, admittedly less common in secure cities, or just for ease of use. One thing we do see frequently, however, is the extensive use of shuttlecraft and runabouts to navigate around the planet. Shuttles are of comparable size to sky cars, slightly larger depending on the model, but have the advantage of being pressurised and capable of leaving the atmosphere. On top of this, they rely not on anti-grav generators, but impulse engines. The speeds achievable by impulse are incredible factors, in the vacuum of space even nearing light speeds not so in atmosphere. For a start, any object that accelerated to near light speeds in an atmosphere is not going to be very popular with that planet's inhabitants. For about three seconds and then they'd be dead. To be fair, only really starships can achieve that kind of speed, but the impulse drives of shuttles are nothing to be sniffed at so limits would be in place for sure. Vessels that leave the atmosphere have to be booked or flight plans logged and are strictly monitored, probably by transport offices or Starfleet. Thanks to Star Trek Picard's flagrant use of Discovery Era assets, we do now have a lore edition that shows us that older shuttles that were made for Starfleet can find their way into civilian services as taxis. Old shuttles are outclassed in Starfleet with newer ones that are faster and longer ranging, but that does not mean the old ones are useless especially in an atmosphere where top speeds are heavily limited and they do not need to engage in far-ranging survey missions or the like. Take an old shuttle 
gut the storage and equipment in favour of comfier seating, limit the impulse drives to atmospheric flight regulations and give it a new paint job and there you go, functional coach. But even with shuttles being common, the occasional sky car or hovercar streaking across the skies, there are still not as many as you'd expect to see. This is because of the transporter. Star Wars does not feature teleportation technology, although I believe the occasional space-time gate is used, but these are exceptional devices, not the norm. Star Trek, on the other hand, has always had transporters, and they are rated as being the safest form of travel ever. Transporter booths are commonplace on street corners, featuring a series of programmed destinations to receiving booths. There were also hubs allowing for beaming across not only cities, but across the planet, and by the turn of the 25th century, Starfleet operated its own branch of transporter arches for arrivals at Starfleet facilities. As for crossing oceans, well, vehicles are mostly redundant because of the ease of hovercar travel, with this technology functioning over water surfaces too. However, there were recreational boats such as the Grenthaman Water Hopper. Speaking of, there still exists a number of recreational methods of travel around a city, simply because it was fun or a hobby to do so. Older, wheeled cars, not just the ones still in operation, but restored or replica relics of earlier centuries still existed, with aficionados of early technology like Tom Paris or the alternate James Kirk still restoring and working on such creations. These were still road legal, considering they passed, just as we see classic cars today, maintained for nothing more than the history and the fun. Additionally, we see that horse and carriage is still a peaceful and novel way to traverse a city, such as the ones cited in New Orleans, and several captains have a noted interest in equestrian pursuits. Pike, Picard and Kirk to name a few, although it can be fairly pointed out that the caring and use of a horse is far more than selecting a form of locomotion, which is part of the allure. Although this also applies to the old-fashioned vehicle restoration too, ultimately any form of traversing around the world is likely in some part done for the experience itself and not using the most convenient and practical option. Otherwise, we would not see skycars or shuttles at all, only transporters. There seem to be various methods of transportation around a planet, from hovercars and bikes to aircars and even older wheeled automobiles, but assumedly these too would fade as transporters became ever more accessible and capable. Funnily enough, I expect the longest lasting forms of transport to be something as simple as a horse, for the simple fact that it is a living creature. Thanks for watching this look into locomotion in Star Trek, I've been Rick. Thanks again, and goodbye.